Welcome back. Now we're looking at P3. And P3 says we need to explain how the principles of software design are used to produce high quality software applications that meet the needs of users. Describe the constructs and techniques available in different programming languages. Explain how they are implemented and documented, contrasting their implementation in different programming languages. So P3, you're going to use all the speaking points from A4 on the spec. So on the unit 4 spec, you're going to go down to where it says A4 and you're going to use all of these. Use as many as you can. In P2, I did ask you guys to steal a few points from here to mention. Again, don't go into too much detail because in P3, that's where you're going to go into all the details. So again, for P2, you steal a few pointers from here just to speak about in the different languages for P2. For P3, you use all of this for P3. Again, it's going to be a very, very long assignment because it's research heavy. But again, it's not hard because they give us all the speaking points. Before we even look at the stuff in A4 from the spec, I'm going to go down on my document. And it says, what is software design? The reason I asked this question, when we scroll back up to P3, explain how the principles of software design... But if I don't know what software design is, how can I explain what the principles are, right? That's my logic anyway. So what is software design? Find some information on the internet in books. Reference it. R-E-F-I-T. Reference it. Right? Then I'm going to um, tackle the next one straight away where it says, what are the principles of software design? How is each principle used? So you're going to have a decent list. So you're going to have principle one. It might be um, whatever it is, right? Principle two. And I would say give about four. So you might have something like this where you have principle one, two, three, and four. Go on Google. So if I go back to Google and Google uh, principles, I think I already did this, principles of software design. Here we go. I have a list of six here. This is just a random website. Sorry, a list of seven. This is just a random website that gave me seven. Go and find your own. If you find a different website that has eight or five or seven or six like it has here, choose that and reference that website and say that I got my points from here. Read it, understand it, and rewrite it. Do not copy and paste anything. That is plagiarism, and you should be given a zero if you copy and paste. If you read something and you understand it, right? So, for example, I'm able to read this and understand it. Explain how the principles of software design are used to produce high-quality software applications that meet the needs of users. So, first and foremost, I need to know what uh, software design is. That's number one. Then I need to know the principles of software design. That's number two. Then I need to know what software applications are. Let me put that in as well. I don't think I added that. So let me get rid of this for now. Then I'm going to put what are, sorry about the spelling, what are software applications? That's number three's question. I would put as well maybe the types of software applications, types of software applications, because it says that we need to meet the user's needs. Now, a user's needs for Microsoft Word and Google Docs and maybe whatever, WPS Word Writer, right? Those are going to be the same application across different um, uh, companies. But if I have the types of software applications, then I can specify the need based on that. So if I say types of software applications and I go maybe gaming, this was from the spec as well, I think. If I go gaming, what are, what is the need for gaming? What do people need from gaming? If I say entertainment could be gaming as well, but I'm going to put that separate. I spelled it wrong, of course. Entertainment. That's going to be stuff like Netflix, Amazon Prime Video. I'm going to have Hulu Plus, whatever you call that one. Right? So what do people need from these services? And then we can give a few examples of the types of apps that are in there. Okay? And then it's only after this. Let me put about two more for this one. So uh, entertainment, gaming, admin. That's going to be uh, email apps, so email, so maybe stuff like Outlook, or maybe Gmail. Let's do Office Suites, so Microsoft Office, WPS Office, whichever Office Suites that you can think of. The last one I can think of is maybe Creativity. Creativity. Um, I like to edit videos, and I use Filmora. I use, I've used Premiere Pro. I've used others as well. But this is the list of four that I would use types of software applications. Now, you don't have to stick to four. I recommend doing more than four. There are so many different types of software applications that you can think of. Find a Google list and list about five or ten. You don't have to speak about all five or ten, but at least list them. Because people are going to need 
people need a different thing from gaming than they might do from admin, a different thing from creativity than they do from entertainment. So if you have a nice pack list of types of software applications, then when we come back to speak about how these meet the user's needs, we can go back to any one of them. So beyond this now, this is just your introduction. So these are the questions I would ask for the introduction and this is how I would layer my introduction. After that is then I would come down and mention each of these. So command words, what are command words, right? And then I would speak about those command words in my chosen languages. So command words, so what, uh, what, oh gosh, sorry, what are command words? And then I would speak about command words in general, right? In all programming languages, not just Python, not just Python, not just Java in general. Then I would maybe find some command words for Java or Kotlin, Right, this is Kotlin as well, same thing, but use Kotlin instead. Command words for Python, command words for C, I thought I said, a C++ and I think R. Command words for each of these. This again is going to be a very, very long section, but this is how I would do it. Command words for each of these. After command words, the next thing I had on the list was a cons uh, constants and variables, local and global variables. Okay, so that's a nice easy one again. I think I mentioned this in P2 as well. So let's say variables first. Variables, you define variables. So what are, sorry about the spelling, not my usual keyboard. Variables, what are variables in general? Then we're going to speak about variables in all these languages again. Kotlin, Java, right? We're going to also speak about uh, constants. You might as well do it all at once. Constants, local, and global. So let me just quickly go over what these mean, and but you guys should definitely go and research as well. A variable, just from the English word vary or varied, is something that can be changed, something that changes or can be changed, right? That's what a variable is in programming. Now, you should go find your own definition. A constant is a value that is not changeable. We should not be able to change a constant. So the speed of light is known as a universal constant, right? A local variable is one that can be used in that section or fragment of the code. So in Python, we have function. In most of these lang languages, we have methods or functions, right? So a local variable should only be able to be used in that function, within the scope of that function. So in Python, we define, uh, define a function that's called Bob, and Bob does some stuff. The stuff that Bob does should only be in the Bob function if it's a local variable. If it's a global variable, so again, I always say to you guys, IT engineers, computer scientists, we don't know how to name things. We simply describe things. So a global variable can be used anywhere in the program. I can go anywhere and use that variable. A local variable can only be used within a subsection of that program, within a function, within a method. A constant is, again, the, from the English word constant, can't be, um, cannot be changed. And the word variable can be changed. Nothing special here. I would speak about each of these points for these languages. So what are variables in general, right? Then I would come and say a constant in Java or Kotlin is done in this way or done in that way. A to create a local variable in Java would be done in this way and reference it. So I believe I have these websites here open. So keywords, and I have, we looked at keywords just before. So the keywords or the command words for Kotlin would be from the main Kotlin website. So I would copy this link and I would go to my document and I would reference this. I think I did the same thing for Python. This isn't the Python website, but it really doesn't matter. These are the command words or the, or, or the keywords for Python. So I would just copy this link as well and reference it. And there, there you would have all your command words for Python, all your command words for, uh, for Java, but you wouldn't have to use all of them. Mention a few of them. Right, And when we go down to um, the variables, I would speak about each one because it's easy enough to get these. So how do we do local variables in, um, in Java? Um, well, in Kotlin, how do we do global variables? How do we do variables in general? And how do we do constants? That's how I would do that. Data types, that's a very, very important one. So data types. So again, same process. I'm just trying to show you guys a process, right? What are data types in programming? Right? Then... I'm going to speak about data types in each of these languages. Now, I know that Python, I mean, Python has a lot, a lot more data types, right? But the main ones that people normally focus on are string, 
Boolean uh, float. I'm going to put float or double as one thing because one is just more accurate than the other. I don't remember which one. I think float is 32 bits long, whereas a double is 64 bits long. But don't quote me on that. I keep forgetting this. Uh, the next one would be integer, I-N-T-E-G-E-R. That's a whole number. I'm not sure if I've left anything off. If I have, I'm sorry, right? But this is the typical list of data types. At the, mo at, at the most basic level, this is what people use. And you go and find the same thing for R, C++, C, and, and Java as well. But speak about them. So the common data types in Python are string, boolean, float, double integer. An example of how to assign... Again, this is how I would do it. This, this is what I would say. An example of how I would assign a string in Python would be name equals Bob. And then I would say, note that the name value, so the, the, the variable's name, the variable is actually called the name. The value is Bob. And note that Bob is in quotes. That's how I would do it. I would probably do that for each one. And I would do, uh, let's say, up or down is the variable name. If it is true, the value is up. If it is false, the value is down. For float or double, I would probably say something like height. And again, this is just research stuff. You're just looking at things and go and grab this information from those websites. Let me just put a space here so it's very obvious what's going on. Height, I would do maybe 1.25, something random like that. Integer, uh, age is a good one. And I'm going to say I am 100, right? And that's it. So speak about data types in programming in general then speak about the common data types in the chosen programming languages that you've mentioned so the common data types in python and then show how they're initialized or created why not right and i'm not going to do anymore because hopefully you guys have gotten the structure of how to do this so here we have the main constructs and techniques and this is what they are other constructs such as you don't have to go into now this is where you don't have to go into everything again because it says other constructs such as i would focus on all the main ones so where it says programming language constructs and techniques including focus on all the one two three four five bullet points here then maybe pick a couple from the bottom one the one i would pick the one i like to be fair is going to be uh, maybe arrays and maybe foul handling. These are very two important, two very important things in programming in general, in any language you use. Because in today's day, an, an array is known as a data structure. A data structure is used to hold multiple, or just hold data in general, right? So data structures are very important. And foul handling, uh, most people will know how to read, open, write to a text file. So actually create a text file in your program Put some information into the text file but again before i go to let's say arrays and file handling i would say what are arrays in programming what are arrays in programming and you're going to figure out that arrays are data structures that's what you're going to figure out and in different languages they're called different things in java i know they're called arrays and array lists that's what they're called in python i know that they're just called lists i don't i don't know what they're called in other languages because i've only used them extensively in these two languages but you can figure that out so if you do data structures in c you'll figure that out you could do data structures in c plus plus you'll figure that out as well data structures in r you'll figure that out as well so that's what i would do just to quickly recap i would use the spec i would go to section a4 and I would mention every single one of these things for every language. So for Python, I would do command words. For Java, I would do command words. For C, I would do command words. For C++, I would do command words. For R, I would do command words. For constants, variables, local, and global variables, I would do that for Java, C, C++, Python, and R. And I would go through this entire list at the top. From the bottom, it says other constructs, which means we don't have to go into all of them, but I would still grab a few of them and use them. So for me, I would say arrays and file handling just because I like those two. If you want to choose subroutines, functions, and procedures, that's perfectly fine as well. Nothing wrong with that. So that's why I would do P3. Hopefully that was useful. Leave any questions you have in the description below, and I will try my best to answer anything as soon as I can. But that should be descriptive enough. Thank you.